Welcome to another Infinite Painter 6 tutorial. Today we will be dealing with customizability of Painter. Uh, well, I tried to find a better title for this video, but this word seems to have no better equivalent in English. Customizability are the features of an application that allow user to change the look or behaviour of that application. And yes, Infinite Painter is customizable. That means you can change a lot in the look and behaviour of this application. Let's start from the look. Many people like the minimalistic simplicity of the default interface of Painter, and for good reason, but probably others would like it to be less minimalistic in certain aspects or simply darker. So how about this? This is not another application, this is not an experimental beta version, this is simply a custom configuration of a regular Painter 6. You can build your own version of the interface to make it fit your needs. I show you how to do that. As you see here, you can change colors, size, sometimes position of the interface element, you can add custom items, you can place floating reference image, images and so on. First of all, you can change the color theme of the interface. I personally prefer the dark theme because it is better when you work at night. When we are here, you can also change the style of the color wheel, both the main and the floating version of the color wheel. The choice is basically aesthetic, but some of the variants offer some interesting features. Then you can change the size of the interface. As you see, I use the lowest setting because I always use a precise stylus, so the size of the icons uh, is less important and I have more room for my paintings. With just these settings, you may change the look of the application dramatically. Now let's move things around. The main toolbar may be placed in almost any position on the screen, but a couple of locations make more sense than others. If you put the toolbar here, you can control it with your left thumb. Note that the vir virtual sliders for size and opacity now work exactly like in applications like Procreate, Sketchbook and Artflow Studio. You can place the toolbar in a corner of the screen and it behaves like controls from early versions of Painter. I personally prefer to have the toolbar near my right side of the screen because I usually work with my stylus only. Okay, now let's add some custom elements to the interface. First, you can place a color selector on the screen, the color wheel or the swatch palette, or both if you want. When we talk about the swatch palette, you can customize it as well. You can download a ready set of swatches or you can build your own set and save for future use. You can also create a custom swatch set from current project. The swatches are sampled from all visible layers, not only from your active layer. You can also create a custom toolbar containing all the tools you use frequently, just long press and drag an icon over the top edge of the screen. This feature works only on tablets and the number of available slots depends on the size of the screen and the scale of the interface. And there is also one visual aspect of the application that can be changed, it is the language of the interface. By default, Painter uses system language, but you can force it to show English labels and messages. Ok, besides visual elements, you can customize the behavior of certain aspects of the application. You can set your preferred functions to two gestures, double tap and long press. You can also bind certain functions to hardware buttons, volume keys and stylus buttons if you use a stylus with side buttons. Also, if you use a stylus, you can bind a separate function to your finger, so you can have two tools active in the same time. For Samsung tablets, locking the back button is a very useful feature. A special area of the application that is pretty flexible and customizable are the brushes. Even if the default set of brushes cannot be changed much, you can add more custom brushes and you can adjust each default brush to fit your needs. You can even rename the default brushes. Brushes can have 
both brush heads and textures change to any bitmap you can import. Also paper layer can have custom color and custom texture. Once you've set a custom paper texture it becomes a new default for new projects. There are also a few other hidden options that can be useful. If you tap opacity button you see not only opacity slider but also flow and softness. If you now select the name of one of these it will replace the virtual opacity slider and now you can adjust softness instead of opacity here. The last hidden customizable feature is the way the selection mask is displayed. You can use the marching ant style of selection or a color overlay similar to quick mask in Photoshop. And exactly like in Photoshop you can change color and opacity of the overlay. Setting dark color and 100% opacity makes sense when you use a brush to paint the selection. Now you can have full control over the mask and transparency. Then I can turn the mask opacity to zero and the mask disappears and doesn't get in the way. Ok, definitely Painter is not as customizable as professional desktop applications, but among mobile painting programs it is one of the most flexible. I hope you've learned how to customize Painter and it will improve your experience of using this great application. Subscribe for more tutorials and consider supporting my channel. Thanks for watching.